So hi friends, today we will discuss an important current affairs issue, India's wheat export ban favoring consumers over farmers. Recently, in the last month, government of India has taken a decision to ban the export of wheat from India. So why actually government want to ban the wheat exports and did really India is a traditional exporter of wheat when India started exporting this wheat what are the reasons behind this export ban the implications of this particular decision and how it could have been dealt in a better way so these aspects will discuss in this video and it is important for paper 3 GS3 okay so before I start, okay, I'll explain favoring consumers over farmers a little bit late. First of all, I'll explain about the wheat, wheat production and wheat export and the reason for this exporting and the reason for export ban. Those things I'll discuss and later I'll go for the decision and its impacts on both consumers and as well as the farmers. See, wheat is a staple food in India. North Indians they consume wheat more and even South India also consumes the wheat. Every year we are increasing our production in wheat and now it is more than 100 million tons. This year initial estimation was 110 million tons but later it has reduced. But wheat is a compulsory part of a compulsory thing in Indian diet. Now in India it is the second largest wheat system in India when it comes to the production consumption because lot of people are there in India will consume more also. Now the production when it comes to the India it is more than 100 million tons and this year we have estimated like 110 million tons will be the production but it has reduced because in the government estimates government reduced it to 98 to 100 million tons but still it is not a small number million tons or you can say million metric tons so 98 to 100 million metric tons we are going to get and this is a gap in that estimation i will come to that the reasons for the gap and did really india consumes 111 metric tons million tons of wheat no it don't consume. It will consume only part of that 111 million tons. But remaining things will be kept as a buffer. Remaining thing kept as a buffer. When it comes to the consumption, in two ways consumption happen. One is at the market rate people purchase and they will use it. Second one is under National Food Security Act, Government of India supplies the wheat. In these two ways this consumption happened in India and these things will be taken completely by the individuals like private people and here it is done by the government. And in order to meet some extraordinary conditions, this government is having its own buffers also. Food Corporation of India have its own buffers and in that buffers around 30 million tons of production, 30 million tons of grains that we are storing in in the form of buffers. So we are producing, some we are consuming and some we are keeping it aside. Are we exporting anything from this? Are we exporting anything from this? Because almost 80 percent what we are producing we will consume or we will use in our own country. And if at all I want to give an export number, export number, I have an export number in the last three financial years, 2019-20. 2020-21 In the year 2019-20 the exports the exports of wheat is 0 0.2 million tons 0 0.2 million tons in the year 2020-2021 it is around 2.5 million tons sorry 2.15 million tons in the year 2021-22 it is 
सेवन पॉइंट टू मिलियन टन्स एंड हाउ मच दिस इयर वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सपोर्ट इनिशियली वी एस्टिमेटेड समथिंग बट एनी हाउ देर इज अ बैन सो यू नो नीड दैट नंबर initially we estimated like 10 to 15 million tons we may export it so this is the level of exports that we are doing if you compare yourself with what you are producing what is the level of export that we are doing every year this year it is 2021 22 maybe it is 7% this year having some reasons that is why 7% But earlier, it's not even two per. It's not even three percent. That means only two to three percent of production what we are doing that we used to export. So you must understand, like India is not a traditional exporter in wheat. India is not a traditional exporter in wheat. Most of the India's production will be used for domestic consumption and as well as the buffer stock purposes. When the numbers are like this when the numbers are like this then where is the question of india's exports where is the question of india's exports and where is the question of india's export ban as if we are exporting so much amount of grains to the world and if at all i want to give some numbers i am having some statistics with me this statistics is from 2017 to 2022 so what is the level of exports that done by the various countries at the global level 2017 to 2022 for 5 years it is russia russia 183 million tons exported ukraine in the 5 years ukraine it has exported 91 million tons not per annum in the 5 years when it comes to the united states of america around 125 million tons when it comes to the european union it is 157 million tons now i'll come to india when it comes to the india in the last 5 years it is 12.6 million tons 2% of what we have produced 2% of what we have produced when it comes to the united states of america it is around 30% it is around 30% so that means india's export compared to the other countries it is very less compared to the other countries it is very less india when it compared with its production it's hardly doing 2% then from where this question of export comes this question of export has arisen because of these two countries these two are russia and ukraine now that means as and today when we are discussing this issue now i think russia and ukraine come to a conclusion or come to an agreement that at least we must give a way for this export of wheat because world is facing some severe problem but till these many days there is no such consensus and when these two countries russia and ukraine went for a war and this much amount of wheat i cannot say like this is not per year this is only for 5 years but still it is having a larger stake in the wheat market so that is why when the, the the wheat export countries like russia and ukraine because they don't have much population and they are having some huge grasslands and they can produce wheat more and they are exporting to the world now when they are facing the problem of war immediately this amount of the, the wheat from these countries has the, the supplies got disrupted when the supplies got disrupted immediately india want to make this situation make this india want to use this situation to the advantage of india because when major exporting countries are unable to export when there is a huge production in the country when there is a scope for export when there is a scope for export why can't we export so that is what the stand that has taken by the government of india 
but one major important aspect that you need to understand what are the things that india export what are how india exports the wheat how india exports the wheat because government is saying like oh we have lot of wheat and we can export it but the wheat that is available with the government the wheat that is available available with the government and that too lot of amount of wheat is only procured by the government procured by the government private people are there but private people one is also there but government is a major stakeholder in procuring the wheat from the farmer wheat from the farmer and whatever the wheat that is procured under this food security act or through the food corporation of india government cannot export that wheat government cannot export that wheat because world trade organization rules don't permit for that don't permit for that if a private person if a private person he we procures from the farmer he can export to any other country but whatever you are procuring out of this and from this buffers you cannot export it to the world market this is a condition because this procurement is happened in a subsidized way because we will offer some msp and all that is the reason why that is the reason why this one not allowed and on april 11 2022 when this russia ukraine is in war and this entire wheat crisis has happened on april 11 2022 prime minister of india has given a statement if wto allows us to export the food grains that what we have then india start exporting from tomorrow and can feed the world that is what the statement given by the prime minister on april 11 that means we are ready to export and we are having lot of grains with us and if you give the permission definitely will start exporting from tomorrow but anyhow that issue was aside government has allowed the exporters that means whatever the private individuals are there private individuals are there who procured from the farmer on their own and they started giving licenses to export the wheat and we have started exporting from april 11 onwards so that is how we have started the wheat exports so prior to that we don't have much market at the international level and we wanted to export and we have started exporting it we have started exporting it and when we started exporting it suddenly on may 13 we have taken an another decision to ban the exports on may 13 we suddenly decided to ban the exports why there was a change in policy within one month with respect to the export of wheat why there is a sudden change in policy the sudden change in policy has happened for so many reasons i'll explain but i'll tell you one thing when you allowed the export for almost one month one month in india when government is procuring the food grain from the farmers they will offer minimum support price this minimum support price is around 2100 rupees per quintal 2100 rupees per quintal but when the private people got an opportunity to export then suddenly because there is a huge demand for wheat in the international market and the rate suddenly it has become 2400 rupees per quintal per quintal in the open market when there is a huge demand in the international market and when you allow the exporter to do to do the exports so now what happened is lot of farmers has sold their crop to the private people rather to the government entities like food corporation of india because they are getting good price here that is why to they are they sold most of the crops here most of the crop or most of the harvest here because of that because of that the procurement done by this food corporation of india or the government of india earlier last year it was 43 million tons 43 million tons and this year suddenly it has come down to 19 to 20 million tons because 
some farmers sold their crop to the private people and some farmers are keeping wheat with them maybe with an anticipation like prices may increase much more but government is not accepting the second idea like farmers still have the harvest with them government is saying like all the harvest whatever is there with the farmers they have sold it to the private people but still some analysts are saying like farmers still hold some amount of crops with them okay anyhow keep that point aside but because of this production because of this procurement has come down procurement has come down when procurement has come down it will certainly impact the food distribution program of government of india called pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana or you can call it as national food security act this was an earlier existing one and under the covid 19 by adding some extra grants at a subsidized much more subsidized rate government of india started this scheme and they have extended this scheme they have extended this implementation of this scheme anyhow even if this scheme is not there under this also we will distribute but in order to provide some extra benefit to the people we are providing the food grains so when there is a less procurement certainly it will have its own impact on this distribution scheme so this is one aspect that you need to remember one aspect that you need to remember so the reasons for the reasons for banning of export is most of the food grains are diverting to the private so there is less amount of grains available with the government certainly it may impact it may impact the food grain distribution program of government maybe that is the reason why they might have taken decision that is one reason that is one reason second one is the wheat production has come down the wheat production has come down why wheat production has come down because i told you like initial estimation was 111 metric million tons but we are end up with 98 to 100 million tons the reason is because of this heat because of this heat waves are increasing temperature because this is a time the month of march is a season during this the wheat kernel the wheat kernel translate into starch protein and other dry matter and when that requires around 30 degree of temperature but suddenly the temperature has increased from 35 to 40 and that to heat wave condition because of that that production has come down when production has come down automatically automatically whether we use that entire production for the distribution or not that's a different story but when someone sends that there is a decrease in production automatically it leads to it leads to the increase in prices because some market conditions will act in such a way that so they will store some amount of grains aside and they may create artificially a demand so that is how the market works so that means when we came to know that the production come down then the prices started increasing and if at all i want to give inflation numbers in the month of april in the month of april and we are all aware the whole the consumer the consumer price index based inflation cpi inflation in the, in the month of april is it is around 7.8% 7.79 whole cpi and if i further split and the cereals inflation the inflation in cereals is 5.96 5.96 cereals especially for wheat especially for wheat the inflation is 9.59% 9.59 is the inflation for wheat that means wheat prices started increasing the production has come down the prices is increasing and there might be a less there there there, there, there might be a less availability for the distribution to the people because you don't know how long you will extend that pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana scheme anna yojana scheme now another thing is government said the total food crop the total the total food grain that farmers already sold to the trader the farmers already sold to the traders traders 
now the entire crop is with the traders and if i allow this continue continued increasing prices of wheat it will benefit the trader but not the farmer had the grain in the hands of farmer the increase in prices may benefit the farmer but now entire thing is in the hands of the trader so it will only benefit the trader that is why we are banning it because there is a domestic shortage that is that is there is a domestic shortage so that is why for these four reasons government of india taken a complete u turn step on may 13 with respect to this export of wheat export of wheat government of india has taken a u turn so the reasons for taking that step is this the reasons for taking this that step is this okay so you understood why government of india has taken that step in order to stabilize the prices in order to stabilize the prices and government of india has given an another reason also it is a commerce minister has given that explanation like when when the food grains already in the hands of the traders it will affect not only india it affects all over the world and the poor people across the world will suffer more that's what the statement he has given because these traders will exploit them suddenly our minister has concern lot towards the foreign countries anyway i'll come to that little bit late now when this decision is implemented what is wrong with this decision is it really a good decision because we are not a traditional exporter suddenly we export and suddenly we have stopped the export we reach to where are we on april 11 where are we on april 11 but some people started criticizing the government you suddenly started export and suddenly you have taken a decision whatever the decision that you have taken in the in the earlier instant perhaps a good decision that is what most of the agricultural economists are suggesting because the problem with this decision is banning of export when you allow the export when you allow the exports you have seen the increase in prices of wheat by 10 percent 2100 to, to the prior to that no one even private people in india they are not even ready to purchase at 2100 it is the msp government used to give that to 2100 but suddenly private people started giving more than msp that means when you allowed the export the prices increased the prices in the sense the the, the 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 price for that wheat in the market increased that automatically increases the income of the farmers income of the farmers that is why most of the farmers sold their crop to the private people and you are you haven't allowed that privilege to continue for some more time and had you allowed that privilege to continue for some more time maybe some more farmers they have the food grains with them they could have sold it to in the open market and they might have get some sort of benefit this is one argument that means the the, the the problematic thing in the entire indian agriculture sector is market so government of india has taken a decision to implement the three farm laws related to the market reforms market reforms but suddenly they have taken back because of the opposition from some parts of the country some parts of the country so now you allowed some liberalization in market reforms that means now you said farmers can sell anywhere even they can export but suddenly what you said is no because there is a shortage and consumers may get a problem because the prices are increasing that is why you said export ban you said export ban so it will hurt the farmers it will hurt the farmers second important is this policy of liberalization in market reforms policy of liberalization in market reforms liberalization in market reforms has taken a back step has taken a back step because lot of people in this country mostly agricultural economists they are arguing like the only solution that will increase the income of the farmers is this one and you you have taken that decision and some farmers got a benefit out of that and suddenly suddenly you are reverted back so this is another wrong thing with that policy 
third one is you are favoring consumer more rather than farmer you are favoring consumer more rather than farmer when there is no see suppose just assume you can see take the case of tomatoes when there when the tomato price is 1 rupee a kg 2 rupee a kg who will take care about the farmer no one is take caring about farmer do you think that governments will come and they will provide some sort of benefit to the farmer no but when suddenly there is an increase in prices because of international demand farmers are trying to get some benefit and you say like nothing doing it will increase the prices and inflation is increasing so i don't allow that farmer to take that benefit and you are benefiting the consumer you are benefiting the consumer and that too that too if you understand if you understand who are the consumers that are benefiting see i said like when prices are increasing prices are increasing the government of india is already distributing the food grains government of india is already distributing the food grains to the 80 crore people 80 crore people 80 crore people and the remaining people will purchase it from the market remaining people will purchase it from the market that means which consumers are really getting a problem these people these are middle class urban some uh, middle class and rich people that means to provide the benefit to the rich and middle class people you are uh, you are creating some sort of inconvenience to the farmer so at the cost of farmers you are providing advantage to this section is it really a good policy and one more thing you are saying like no i have to distribute it to the people and there is less amount of domestic availability so i have stopped the exports but even in this 80 crore population to whom government of india is giving this free grain distribution how many are really eligible how many are really poorer than farmers how many are really richer than farmers do you think that this 80 crore people are really poor they are not in a position even to purchase the food grains no it's not like that because the act itself say like no 50 percent of urban population 75 percent of the rural population should cover irrespective of their economic status that means in order to provide the benefit to some middle class and above middle class people you are hurting the farmers that is what you need to understand that is what we need to understand so this is wrong with this decision another important aspect with respect to this policy is what about your doubling of farmers income you said i will double the income of farmers but when farmers are ready to get some sort of benefit suddenly you stop in what way we can increase the income of the farmers you can increase the income of farmers whenever they find a good price in the market and when they are trying to find that good price you are not allowing them so these are some of the things these are some of the things that are problematic with the decision taken to ban the export of wheat to the international market international market and when you suddenly take a decision g7 countries have started suddenly criticizing india now when world is facing the problem why you are stop the food grains and it is china who supported india no you cannot decide so you cannot decide whether someone should export or someone should import it is a country's domestic policies will decide whether exports or imports are taken place on a particular front not because someone had criticized not because someone has criticized not because someone has supported it is all about your farmers it is all about your farmers and do you know how it is going to impact the policy implications of the implications of this policy now i'll come to the implications of this policy so implications of this de this decision so how it going to impact first government of india has committed to some countries like we are going to provide the food grains to you and government government of india's bureaucrats belongs to commerce ministry agriculture ministry and even they went for the other countries in search of markets like we are having the wheat and we will export to your country and suddenly now you have taken a decision back where is the policy consistency where is the reliability in your policy 
where is the credibility tomorrow did anyone believes india if you suddenly take a decision back you have taken a decision and everyone is happy and suddenly you have taken it back and what about your domestic what about your domestic exporters 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 what will you tell them and if any foreigner who want to invest in this food business and all what is the the, the, the policy reliability or what is the assurance that you will give as far as the policy continuity so that policy continuity and reliability is very very important it hurt external countries okay you can convince them but what about your domestic people what about your domestic people and tomorrow if you say tomorrow if you come with any decision like okay i am liberalizing this market reforms now the farmer can grow and they can sell in the international market you can find the better market you can tell but did really the farmers and the people who are dealing with that business will they really believe you you don't know when again you will put a ban on any product you said like if wto allows me uh, we can export the food grains from tomorrow onwards we can feed the world but within one month you have taken a decision back and you are saying like i wanted to liberalize the reforms and i wanted to open the gates for indian farmers and i wanted indian products should reach to the foreign market but suddenly when you are taking this policy decisions back does it really gives the confidence to the indian farmers who want to farm at a larger scale or who want to grow a different variety crops who's having demand in the international market so what is the policy stance that you have so that is an another important implication of this particular decision so this crop diversification agricultural markets they are going to have serious impact because the policy consistency is very very important and last one is this global responsibility so don't india have any global responsibility so you wanted to be a vishwaguru and you wanted to be a member of united nations security council when world is facing a problem when you have enough food grains and i have said that 30 million tons of buffer it is well above the the required buffers required buffer is around 27 or 26 million ton that is required but we are having above the required amount of food grains but what is the responsibility that you have so tomorrow how can you uh, support your own how can you defend yourself so like these are some of the important implications of this particular decision this particular decision now last then if that is the case what could have been done what could have been done by the government of india what decision we could have taken so what could have been done so a lot of agricultural many agricultural economists are suggesting many agricultural economists are suggesting that when private people are ready to procure at 2400 rupees when your msp is 2100 they have procured more you procure less and now you said i don't allow these private people to purchase instead of stopping the market forces instead of stopping the market forces to what extent it is required for the government to what extent it is required for the government to that extent you could have given another 200 or 300 rupees of bonus and you could have purchased the grains which are required to you maybe that last year's like 43 million tons or 50 million tons you could have do that to some extent by giving this and you could have allow the private people to do their own activity so that all the farmers will get a benefit because at least instead of 2100 they are getting 2004 these people are getting again 2400 2450 or 2500 you could have done this government should have been a active market player but rather you started suppressing the market forces this is something you have done wrong you should have done this you should have done this and government could have done that major economic major activity and government has not done that and on that name so i have less grain so i will 
don't i don't allow exports this is something a wrong thing that government has taken second one minimum export price or otherwise minimum some export tariff if you think that if you think that the more amount of grains are shifting to the shifting outside the country you think that this country needs some minimum amount of grains then you should have put minimum export rate and if it if that rate crosses then definitely it may not be economically viable to that for exporter and you could have sell that entire thing in india that you could have done but you haven't done either this or that and you simply stick at 2100 and suddenly prices increase some farmer get a benefit and some people exported and today you are saying like i don't allow this thing so this is not a fair way of dealing with the markets and if you try to suppress the market market forces never believes you you are not supposed to do that this we used to do prior to 1990 and even in agricultural sector we haven't done even today but suddenly you have taken a good decision and you have taken it back and whatever that you are doing to the farmers now it is something like you are penalizing the farmer and you are imposing a tax on the farmer it is something like that they are supposed to get something but they are not getting now they are not getting now it is simply an implicit tax on the farmers and when it comes to the exports still if you believe like there are some problems you could have taken a gradual steps rather than taken a sudden step to ban all the wheat exports from india and you have given some relaxation to the people who have already taken a permissions earlier that's a exceptional thing but you should have taken a gradual step rather a sudden step so these are the three important aspect that the government should have been taken so this is the whole issue with respect to this india's wheat export ban and favoring the consumer rather than farmer and ultimately if you see the whole debate the entire decision is favoring only the consumers and you are not here to save the farmers farmers will be saved only when they get good price not that when you get subsidized inputs subsidized inputs are necessary to some extent but when farmer himself is getting a better price in the market you no need to subsidize the farmer he can compensate all that losses that is anchor he can compensate the entire input cost and he can get the profit but on the other hand you are saying i am providing lot of inputs to the farmer but i don't allow the farmer to get the better price in the market is that the way we need to devise a policy in this way can we really increase the income of farmers can we really make agricultural profitable can we increase the income of the farmers double can we increase the farmers income to to the level of double it's not possible so that is why this issue is very very important and it will have its own effect on this policy consistency and policy reliability and also the market reforms and market liberalization okay so this is about this wheat procurement issue okay thank you amrita ias academy